five things every young adult needs to do to become financially stable. That is what we're going to be talking about today. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. We're going to jump into this extremely important topic right now. The first thing you have to be able to do, this starts before your career, this starts before you start your adult life on your own, this starts in your mind. You have to plan for the future or at least start making a plan for the future. And it's not going to be an easy thing to do, but the rest of this video is going to be all about how you set up that plan and the next four things that you must do to be financially stable as a young adult is what is going to coincide with that plan that you make for yourself. And something that I offer for you specifically, if you want help along with your plan, go ahead and hit the link in the description. It's a free newsletter that I have going out to you every single week with financial advice. It's going to help you along your journey. It's going to help you with your plan as well. It's going to come with articles, video recommendations, and other things that can help you along the way. So check that out. It's 100% free. So the first thing that we're going to talk about with your plan is going to be your employment or your main stream of income. That's what most people in America's mainstream of income is. It's from employment. It's the whole reason you go to school and that's the whole reason you aim to do well in school so you can get the best options possible when you graduate. So you want to get an idea of how much you're going to be making once you graduate, how much you're going to be making once you enter in your field, and then set a goal for how much you want to make right then. That's exactly what I did. Uh, I was in college when this happened for me, but I knew I wanted to be employed in some sort of a manufacturing industry because my background is in industrial engineering. So I knew for a fact I wanted to be around things that move. I wanted to be moving around. I didn't want to be stuck at a desk all day. That's just not who I am. But I also knew that I wanted at least $60,000 a year once I graduated. Uh, to some people, that sounded far-fetched. Some people laughed. Some people scratched their heads. But I reached my goal. And I'm not here to tell you that you should aim for $60,000, but aim for a number that you think is reasonable for the amount of work you're putting in right now in order to get the outcome once you get the job. So that's the first step of having a clear expectation and plan around your employment, but also think about five years in the future. So this is gonna take place before and during your employment. You're gonna to wanna to think, okay, once I get this job, do I wanna stay at the same level for five years? Probably not. You probably wanna keep going up until you hit a comfortable level. Like for me, my top goal was to get the highest position possible, which pays the most, but also has a good amount of work-life balance. So for you, that goal might be, I want to make at least $100,000 a year in the next five years, but not going over 50 hours a week. You can 100% do that, by the way, but that's just an example of what that goal is going to look like. But you also need to commit to this, and this is a big part of the plan. Commit to actually going to work every single day. See, in order to be financially stable, you have to make stable decisions, and you have to be a stable person. There's nothing that shows instability to a workplace more than not coming to freaking work. That is my biggest pet peeve, and as a manager myself, I almost take it personal when people don't come to work. I'm there every day. I'm grinding. I expect the same for everybody else. That's just how I feel about it. But all jokes aside, I do think that's the number one most important thing. That's the one thing that guarantees that your income will 100% be stable because you're there every single day. It shows reliability, dependability, and the more you're at work, the more exposure you're going to get, the more you're going to learn, the more valuable you're going to become over that course of time than someone who's kind of in and out or someone who's talented at their job but never freaking comes to work. We all know people that are like that, probably got some friends like that. And within your career, you have to realize one thing. The reason that you work is so that you can one day retire. Of course, the short term is pay bills, have a decent lifestyle, you know, be able to do some nice things, get your kids some nice things if you have kids, whatever that case is and what that looks like for you. But the long term objective of having a job is to one day retire. Don't ever miss out on that because with jobs come 401ks. With jobs come Roth IRAs and other types of investments. It just depends on where you work at. Some, some places offer different types of investments, but here's where I'm going with this. They're going to be called retirement savings accounts, which is essentially where a piece of your paycheck is going to go straight into an account, which is your retirement savings account, but it's actually tied to the stock market and investments and it's attached to stocks, bonds, and funds and things of that nature. That's what's going to buy you your retirement. Don't be one of those people who's like, oh, you mean if I don't put any money in this 401k, I get more on my check? Don't do that. That's basically saying I'm prioritizing right now and forget about the future. 
Don't ever do yourself like that. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. So even before your employment starts, go ahead and write this down for me. You want to ask about the 401k program that your job offers. And then you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to ask if they have a matching program. If they do, at what percentage do you match? And then once they tell you what that percentage is, commit to that percentage. Most jobs match 50 cents for every dollar. So every $1,000 you put in, that's 500 more dollars your company's going to put in. So they're throwing money at you for free, basically, for investing into your retirement fund. And then since it is tied to the stock market, what's going to happen is it's going to grow by a certain percentage every year. It's going to fluctuate. It's going to depend on how the stock market is doing that year. But what's going to happen is those percentages are going to start multiplying and compounding your money. And your company's still going to be throwing their money in there as well. So it's going to be very beneficial for you as long as you stay consistent and do it while you're young. So many people miss out on this opportunity, and I don't want you to. So you definitely want to write that down. Even if you don't know anything about it yet, write it down and look it up. Get information on it. Don't be someone who is completely clueless when it comes to your retirement account and what it actually means and how much money you can actually get. This is how people get millions of dollars by retirement because they do what I just said. That's million dollar advice right there. Take it or leave it. All right, so we're going to jump to the next part of the planning. You want to plan to have a certain type of lifestyle. When you're first starting out, you want to live a very modest type of lifestyle because you're not really going to know how to gauge the amount of money you're making because a lot of times, like especially when I was a young adult, I had never come into this kind of money before in my life. Like, for example, when I was 20 years old, I did an internship and I was getting like nineteen fifty an hour. I was on cloud nine. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was rich. I thought I was like Drake walking around here. <laughs> I thought I had some serious money going on. And I didn't really have a concept for how much the money I had actually meant. And I didn't have a concept for really what I should do with this money. And therefore, it didn't really get used the way that it should have been used. If I would have used it in a different way, I might have found a way to have a lot more money in my mid-20s or even have a lot more to invest in my mid-20s. So there's a lot of things that happened in the past because of those mistakes with money that I made, but I wouldn't say I regret them because it gave me a knowledge base that I have today that I can help you with. So all I'm saying is you want to plan a certain kind of lifestyle. And in order to plan that lifestyle, you might not know when to start. I didn't know where to start either. What I would recommend you to do right now in your notes app or on a piece of paper, write this down. 50, 30, 20 rule. That is how you figure out what type of lifestyle you're going to have. Because here's the thing. You want to take the amount of money you make per year, not the amount that's on your offer letter when you first get the job. Let's say your offer letter is $50,000 a year. Mm-mm. After taxes, so what's that number after taxes? It's probably going to be something like forty-two or forty-three thousand five hundred, something like that. So that's already deducting six, seven thousand dollars. So now that you have that number written down, now we're going to look at fifty, thirty, twenty. Fifty percent of that big number, fifty percent of what you make after taxes, is going to be your needs. So if you're out here looking for an apartment and you see a really nice one, you're like, oh, that's 50% of the number. Uh-uh. The whole 50% ain't going to go for the apartment. Your apartment should be no more than 30% of that big number. And preferably you want to stick between like the 20% or even lower if you can. But you want to be at 30% or under. And then the rest of your needs are going to come with that as well. So now you have your apartment, which let's say it is 30% of your needs. Now the other 20% of your needs is going to be stuff like groceries, gas, child care, your phone bill, utilities, stuff like that. And when you think of it that way, you're not going to allow yourself to go out here and really splurge and say, oh, well, I can afford it. I can afford, you know, a really nice car with a thousand dollar car payment just because I got the money. Look, you have the money, but you're not going to have it once you spend it every month on that car payment in addition to things that you haven't properly budgeted for. That's why I'm giving you this advice right now because I think it really would have been helpful for me to have this type of, I guess, framework when I first started out. I didn't go out making crazy decisions or nothing, but I just know that if I would have started out with this layout that I'm giving you right now, oh, man. it's a shame how much money I would have. Just saying. But anyway, after that, the 30% is going to go towards your wants. So if you want to fully go 30% into your wants, you can do it because you're going to be financially responsible with the remaining 20%. You're going to actually save that 20%. And if you can save 20% 
of $43,500 a year, let me tell you how much money that's going to be. You'll be saving about $8,700 per year. That's pretty good. A lot of folks that are like grown, grown adults, like 30, 40, 50, don't even have a thousand, two thousand, six thousand dollars in their bank account. But you're going to be able to do 8,700 if you can commit to that 20%. And the easiest way to commit to that 20% is to go ahead and dial everything in within that first 50%. But you want to give yourself as much wiggle room as possible. You don't want to fully go in on that 50% because if you have, let's say, a 10% buffer where you're only spending 40% of your income on your needs, you have 10% that you can play with. You have 10% you could either put in your uh, savings account. You have 10% you can either put in your investing account. You have 10% that can go towards your debt or you have 10% that can go toward your wants. So you have a few things you can actually do. You build financial flexibility with this and that's going to further strengthen your financial stability. I'm giving y'all some game right now. I hope y'all taking notes. But this is how you prevent being in massive debt. This is how you prevent maxing out your salary. Because let's say you looked at your actual salary and you were like, you know what? I make $50,000 a year, so I can spend this, 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 and this. And then it adds up to $50,000, but you only made $43,500. Now you're actually at a deficit. In, in other words, you spent $6,500 that you actually do not have to spend. So now you're negative $6,500, even though you spent the whole year making good money. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want you to prevent. And if you make these decisions early, you will avoid the financial devastation that most adults, young and old, deal with on a daily basis all around you. If you thought that was some valuable advice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. But we're about to jump into the next topic. Here's what it is. Now we're going to roll this into money habits. So we talked about the 50-30-20 rule. The 50-30-20 rule is something that I used to use pretty, pretty closely after I learned what the heck it was and what it meant. But I also did it very manually. Like one of the biggest things that made my personal finances so much easier was automating certain things. But like I said, I didn't really have a concept for how the money was flowing into my bank account and out of my bank account. So I didn't feel comfortable automating everything. So I automated my bills first. So I automated my rent. I automated my utilities because you can't be forgetting those. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you forget those, you're going to be getting some letters in the mail talking about some, hey, you better pay up. And then if you have more bills than that, like your phone bill, for example, you want to automate that as well. And even if you have to baby step it the same way I did, that's fine. But another thing that most people forget to automate is your actual savings. Because how many times, right? How many times have you, whether you were a teenager, your early 20s, or even in your 30s, how many of you have fully planned on saving money one month, but you messed around and spent all the money, and then you looked at the end, like toward the end of the month, and you were like, man, I only have like $50 left. I plan to save like $300 this month. You got to work on building the skill of paying yourself first. If you followed my 401k advice, you already know how to pay yourself first because what your job does is before it even taxes any of your income, it throws the percentage that you committed to into your retirement savings account. So you already done paid yourself first there. So why wouldn't you do the same thing outside of work? Now you pay yourself first in your savings account. I'm talking before your rent, before your utilities, before your car note, before whatever, before your phone bill. Pay yourself first. So now you're telling your account, I'm telling the money where it's going. You have control of your money. Your money doesn't have control over you. Even if you have wants and desires when you go to the mall, when you see certain things that are nice that you like, uh-uh. I'm putting in my 10% for this paycheck and then my 10% for my next paycheck. I'm doing that as soon as that thing hits my bank account. And you can set it up. I even made a video tutorial on how you can do that. It's a video called How to Double Your Savings. You're welcome in advance. So that's a money habit that you want to first start with automating your bills and your savings. That is super, super key. You also want to be in the habit of checking your bank account every single day just to make sure things are looking right. You never know. Mishaps can happen at work where your paycheck doesn't give you the correct number that you're supposed to get, in which case you can contact HR and get your pay right. You know what I'm talking about? Or it might just be like an unforeseen expense where like your gym membership charges you the maintenance fee like every six months or something and you didn't see it coming. So now you might need to readjust some of your financial strategy to keep your account looking the way you want it to look. And it's just a good practice to have just so you can always have that number in your mind. Be like, okay, 
this is looking pretty good right now, but how can I increase it? It's in the three digits right now. How can I get it to the four digits? Oh, it's in the four digits right now. How can I get it to the five digits and keep it there? Stuff like that. You can create new goals for yourself that way. And it's also a really good way to track your expenses just to make sure you're staying on track and you're staying committed to the plan you set out for yourself. See, this personal finance thing can be very easy if you start off with the right information and you understand how much your money actually can get you and how to be smart with it. If you can understand those three things, you can be financially successful no matter what. And then you got to stay consistent with it. You can't let a bad day get in your way of this. You can't let it get in your way of going to work. You can't let it get in the way of you checking your bank account every day. I mean, you probably search and surf through uh, social media and the internet every single day. So why can't you check your bank account every single day? You know what I'm talking about? There's no reason for it. You probably watch Netflix, listen to music every day. You might even listen to a podcast every day. If you can do anything every day that takes a few seconds, one of the single most valuable things you can do is just look at your bank account. Just see how you're doing. And then start making more goals for yourself. Stay consistent with the good financial habits. Stay consistent with your lifestyle choices. And as you do that and you stay consistent as you move up at work and your money goes up, your lifestyle doesn't have to change because you're staying consistent with the current lifestyle. You're happy with it. You might be able to do a little more with the money that you have. Well, readjust your 50-30-20 rule so you're not hurting yourself in the long run. But best practice is to keep your expenses exactly the same. And with the extra money that you do get from an increased salary or a raise, you put it into your savings or you put it into investments. And I'll speak more on investments in another video that I have coming up next week. But I'm telling you right now, these are the things to stay consistent on. And I promise you, you will, you will be more than financially stable. Financially stable is like a staple and a goal for a lot of people in the world. When you walk down the street, when you walk through a school, when you walk through a church, when you walk through a grocery store, there's somebody there that either audibly says, man, I just wish I was financially stable, or they're thinking it. You know what I mean? You don't want to be that person that's feeling that way. You want to be the person that feels in control. And when you're financially stable, that is what that means. It means you're in control. You might not be where you want to be yet, but you are on your way. And that is what I'm here for. That's what this channel is for, is to help you go on your way and become more than just financially stable. I want you to be financially successful. Matter of fact, I want you to be financially independent. And that's what the next video is going to be about financial independence for young adults and how to get there. I got your back and I'm going to help you with every step of that journey. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much. I enjoyed making it as well. And if you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.